when India became independent. Nayantara Sehgal, the novelist, essayist, and chronicler, had a ringside view of those heady days as Modilal Nehru's granddaughter and Vijayalakshmi Pandit's daughter. Excerpts from an interview conducted on the telephone in which she revisits the past and takes stock of 70 years of Indian independence. On being asked what freedom meant to her back in 1947, she says, I was in college in Venice in the US and came back home that year, 1947, in October. I was not here in Delhi on the day itself, but you know, it was a mixed feeling of elation and terrible despair at the thought that India might be divided. And of course, by the time I came home, partition had taken place. I returned to a grim and sad Delhi. I came to stay with my uncle, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. He was living in 17 York Road, now known as Modilal Nehru Mark. And all I could see was how the huge compound was filled with tents for refugees. It was a very grim situation. Now in some distance, I can feel the horror of millions of people uprooted from their homes on both sides of the border in a partition that should have never taken place. Gandhiji, who had been the leader in the fight for our freedom, in which my parents and millions of Indians had taken part, had created and fired this movement, which had proved this divide and rule policy of the British wrong. It was an all India movement which cut across regions, religion, languages, and gender based on the fact that we are more than a country. We are a civilization which is diverse, enriched by several experiences and several sources. So the demand for a country for Muslims was a contradiction in the fundamental belief of inclusiveness. Until March 1948, when I joined my mother in Moscow, I stayed with Uncle Nehru, and then Gandhiji was murdered. My cousins and I were in the York Road house when we were told that Gandhiji had been shot. There had been attempts on his life earlier. We thought the same thing must have happened. We rushed to build a house and, were, and we were in the room when he breathed his last. And that is one thing that stands out for me in those terrible days of post-independence. I was standing there with tears in my eyes. He had been a member of the family, having known them for decades. I was promising myself that I would never let him die. All my life and work is dedicated and committed to the ideas he stood for and the kind of India he had created with the struggle for freedom. Every novel of mine has been about the making of India. My most recent novel, which will be out in September, is about the unmaking of India. The current government under which we are living is dividing India once again into Hindus and others. We have already seen one disastrous partition. I don't want to see another one. I fear for young Indians today. On the 70th year, are we regressing? I'm not celebrating Independence Day because all the good is being undone. They are fighting and changing history, changing names of roads, saying that Akbar lost the Battle of Haldikati. They are falsifying history. They have no use for science. We are rapidly marching backwards. It is taking me to a horrifying future I don't know what young Indians will have now. In a Hindu country where mythology is taking the place of science, I'm not celebrating independence this time. Nationalism today has become an exercise in branding people. Of course, we are independent. And of course, it is a great event, but we are being ruled by the mentality that murdered Gandhiji. Anybody young or old has to watch out and be alert 
that our freedom of expression stays intact.